Good morning, everyone. Today's verse is Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to Purpose Makers E-Church. Good morning. We are happy to be with you guys on this morning. Yes, yes. And yes, we yes. are ready to pray with you guys and yes, get into yes. the Word of God. Into the Word of God. Y'all, when lose a draw, I'm a Steelers fan. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. No words. Oh, yeah. No words at all. Okay. That's it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, as you guys know, we are in a series we're calling Too Much Credit. Too Much Credit. Y'all give the devil too much credit. He ain't about none. He ain't nothing. He ain't nothing. And so, the first one, Too Much Credit, you, you little rebel. Because, you know, we're building against the wrong thing. And the second one was, I got that feeling. Because y'all be in y'all feelings. We be in our feelings. Mm, 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 mm. And the third one, too much credit. I don't remember what it was called. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got my phone to look it up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't even, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know. Where is that? The oh, wait. The devil is bored. That's why we forgot it. Because he, cause he bored. I'm bored with him. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm <laughs> bored with him. The mm. devil is bored. That was the third one. That was the third one. Now the fourth one. The fourth one. Today we're calling Fifth it. Flow. You can't do what? You can't do what? You can't do what? That is today's word. Mm -hmm. You can't do what? That's what we're calling today. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna find out why. You gonna find out why. Cause you gonna get this work. Mm -mm. All right. Let's get into this prayer. Let's thank my our son, Javin. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Javin, for reading us Philippians 4.13. Yeah, that's right. And so that's we'll right. we'll get into that. We'll oh, get yeah, into we that. For sure. Go get into that. But yeah, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to gather, Father God, for, for your will, Father God, to walk inside of your purpose, Father God. We thank you for the strength and the, the Holy Spirit, Father God, to, for guiding us, Father God. We thank you for a mind to praise. We thank you for the word that is about to be released, Father God. We thank you for the, the viewers, Father God. We thank you for the listeners, Father God. We thank you for those who... who who so, Father God, we thank you for each and every part of the body of Christ, Father God. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of the body of Christ, Father God. Father God, we pray that every word, every word that is spoken, Father God, resonates with those that are listening, Father God, those that are hearing, Father God, those that are watching, Father God. We pray that each and every word builds them up and strengthens strengthens them, Father God. We pray that everyone watching, Father God, receives something from this, Father God. We pray that they receive it and, and hold on to it, Father God. We pray for their strength, Father God, so that they can walk with it as well, Father God. We pray that each and every word sinks deep into everyone's heart, Father God. Allow it to become a part of them, Father God, because we are preaching your word, Father God. Strengthen us and guide our, our words, Father God. Guide our lips, Father God, and allow them to speak exactly what you want to be said, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So let's dive right into it. Our Whoa. son Javin has already read us Philippians 4.13, but I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. It yes, says, yes. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Uh -huh. I am ready for anything uh -huh. and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident uh -huh. peace. Uh -huh. That is Philippians 4.13. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So today, I want to talk to you guys about spiritual ignorance. It's ignorant out here. Now, we are responsible for seeking wisdom. Many times the devil uses ignorance to find an avenue in to trick us or uh -huh. to distract uh -huh. us. However, Matthew 10, 16, it says we are like sheep among wolves. We are supposed to be as smart as snakes. 
but as harmless or gentle as doves. Uh -huh. So it's our responsibility, guys. It's our responsibility to seek wisdom, yeah. learn God's ways, and remain alert and watchful, vigilant, aware of danger or the enemy's tactics. In other words, don't be out here being ignorant. Yeah. And so first, let's talk about 2 Corinthians in chapter 2. It's showing us that P Paul's letter, letter, Lord, I said leather, mm -hmm. <laughs> Paul's mm -hmm. letter to the Corinthian saints, where he is teaching or encouraging them to forget. And in verse 11, he closes one of his points by saying, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's the King James Version. Ignorant. In the NLT version, it says, Paul said that, so that Satan will not outsmart us, mm -hmm. for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Discernment. So what Paul was saying here is he was saying, look, we know the devil's tricks. Yep. We already know how you do. Yep. We know how you do. Mm -hmm. So let's go on and do what we should do so he doesn't outsmart us. Fool us. Trick us. Don't be ignorant. All right. In the context, they knew, one, they should forgive. Uh -huh. Two, that forgiveness was for the benefit of them. Uh -huh. And three, they knew the devil's evil schemes. Yes, yep. They used their knowledge of God's instruction for us to forgive and forgive for our own benefit. Yep. And their yep. knowledge of the tricks of the enemy, they understood this knowledge. Yep. They knew what that information meant. And then they used wisdom by applying that knowledge by intentionally staying ahead of the devil's tactics yep. in other words i know that unforgiveness is an avenue for the devil to get in yep. i understand that forgiveness is for my own benefit mm -hmm. and the word of god instructs me to forgive so i'm not even going to let unforgiveness linger i'm going to go ahead and forgive this man before the devil tries to get in through this open door and it indeed is an open door this open door of unforgiveness However, if you do not have knowledge of these things, if you don't understand that forgiveness is not for the other person, but really for you, if you don't know and or understand that you are inviting the devil in by not forgiving, you are now susceptible to the devil's tricks. He and his schemes can now ease in through this open door of ignorance. So sometimes we give the devil too much credit. He didn't do much. Mm, 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 mm. He didn't even have to break down the door. Mm, mm, mm. He didn't have to break in. You opened the door and let him in. Mm, mm, mm. This is why we cannot be ignorant, guys. Ignorant. We need to continue. I'm gonna ignorant. Ignorant. Mm. I'm gonna say it like how your spirit look. Ignorant. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. This is why we cannot be ignorant. We need to continuously seek God for wisdom. Read his word for knowledge and ask the Lord God for understanding, guys. Without these three things, we are exposed in ignorance. Do them continuously, it says. Continuously. So let's again get back to what I mentioned before. Let's talk about spiritual ignorance because that was just ignorance. Yeah. Spiritual ignorance is the lack of knowledge of your capabilities, authority, identity in Christ. Now, many of us are not where we need to be. We're behind or in danger, sidetracked, because we do not know who we are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And since we, we, we do not know our own identity in Christ, we do not know our authority in Christ or purpose. Since we do not know our purpose or authority, we do not know our capabilities, mm -hmm. what we can do, yep. the gifts and skills in us, the things God has granted us the power or capacity to do in his name. We are spiritually ignorant. Mm -hmm. And now, since we have no idea why we are placed on this earth or why we were placed on this earth, earth, what proportions we add to the body of Christ or what God has instilled in us, we have no idea what to water or what to do. We don't know what seed to water. We don't even know what seeds are in us, guys. And so we can't intentionally water a seed if we don't know it's there. Unless you know something I don't. Right. So like when the devil says, nah, you can't start that business. You ain't, you ain't even finished high school. You believe it because you have no idea that God has already instilled entrepreneurial and administrative skills in you. These seeds were in you when you were young. 
but you never watered them because you did not know. You did not know because you never asked. You never ask God to show you your purpose. You never ask God to show you where you're supposed to be and help you get there. You've just been getting by, roaming around, ignorant. 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 Because you have failed to seek knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But guess who knew about these seeds? Who? The devil. The devil. the devil he knew if you launched that business in 2015 when god said it you would be a billionaire by now yeah helping god's people mm -hmm. and he just because he couldn't stand the thought of that happening the devil knew that you were supposed to sing for the glorification of god and that your music would help lead many souls to christ but he tricked you through your low self-esteem he blinded you with focusing more on your circumstances than you were on the kingdom and therefore convinced you of singing secular music because it would pay you more. Uh, it would pay more. Pay more. You remember what we talked about last week about focusing on your circumstances and now your circumstances are now leading your path. It's, yep. it's interfering. It's changing things, changing your behavior. Yep. yep. Influencing the outcome that's what you're allowing your circumstances to influence the outcome which is dumb to allow your current circumstances to influence your later circumstances because you want things to change in your current circumstance mm -hmm. not stay the same or get worse so you mm -hmm. don't want that to influence and you want god to lead you out of those circum unfavorable circumstances yep. and favorable circumstances either way you want god leading you but the devil knew that you and your wife were going to help other married couples intentionally keep Jesus in the center of their marriages so that they could thrive. So he snuck in through unforgiveness for one small argument that you just could not get over. So now you're not helping anyone's marriage because you don't even have one of your own. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. The devil knew mm -mm -mm. that he could sneak in through the door of envy and turn you against your own child. So that you can mistreat that child in order for him to go ahead and start planting lies in that child's mind before they are even old enough to understand what they mean. Mm. God knows. The devil knows. The issue is you don't know. Ignorant. You don't know. Now you have an open door of ignorance on the corner of lack of knowledge lane and mm -hmm. without wisdom road down from no understanding avenue. Mm. The devil is busy. Okay. Why aren't you busy? Busy seeking God. Busy studying his word. God, what's my purpose? I asked you, what am I supposed to do? He told you to launch that company in 2012, and now you're struggling asking God, why me? You didn't want to start it because everyone was saying you weren't smart enough. Uh. You didn't have the skill. You were too young. Uh. You weren't good enough. And you believed it uh, uh, because you don't know who you are. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, close the door. Close. Close the door. Close the door. Of uh. ignorance. Close the door of ignorance. Do you honestly believe the devil would have been able to trick Eve in the garden if she actually knew what the devil meant when he told her eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would make her be like God? If she had understood that sin has major consequences, if she had utilized the wisdom God gave her and applied her authority, her dominion over all the creatures on earth and said, away from me, serpent, I will obey God. You are telling me to do something God said not to do. If God wanted me to know or wanted me to be like him in that way that you're referring to, he would have given me that information. Or created me with that knowledge. But he created me from only dust in a man's rib. You are just some snake in a garden. You can't know more than God knows. Right, right. But she was eating it. Eating it. This here be eating it, boy. Mm -mm. This here be eating it, boy. She was ignorant. And sometimes ignorance in itself may not completely be your fault. All right? Maybe, maybe, maybe just you, you really didn't know about something because you've never been exposed to it. But it becomes your fault after you realize you needed to know something and chose not to learn it. For example, we know we need to know the word of God. Everybody know that? Yet, we won't just pick up our Bibles and read it. We won't attend church. We won't ask questions. We won't turn on church radio or church TV. We won't pray. And then we wonder why we don't know nothing. Nothing. 
See, the devil, he tempted Eve and she bit. Literally. Literally. Mm -hmm. See, when you know the word of God, you can contest the enemy's lies and tactics with truth. Facts. Can't nobody convince you of anything when you have the facts right here in front of you. They're right here. If you were a judge in the courtroom and the defendant came in with loads of evidence and incontestable facts proving they didn't do it while the prosecution came in with nothing but information from word of mouth, you would dismiss that daggone case. The prosecution said, I know he did it because my cousin on my mama's side said it and I know he never lies because he's a good Christian man. You'd be like, get this fool out of here. Get this fool out of here. How do we get knowledge? How do we get wisdom? How do we get understanding? It all comes from God and his word. And his word. Soon as the serpent approached Eve, she could have stated facts. Facts. Well, Maria, what if you're really unsure? I mean, what should Eve have done if she did not know? Well, let me demonstrate. Let me demonstrate. Because at the least she knew God said, do not. Like, key word, not. She understood not, do not eat from this tree. She understood the word not. No. So here's what one can do in uncertainty. God, oh father, the serpent is instructing me to eat this fruit. What should I, don't do it. That's it, don't do it. Instead, she took a bite. She didn't ask. Let me just get clear, because look, I know firsthand, my daughter here, if I tell her not to do something and she's approached with that, she still, if she wants it, she still might come and say, oh, Ma, I know you said not to do it, but, you know, she come for, for approval or confirmation. Like, did you really say not to do it or can I just get a little bit? And Eve didn't do any of that. Nope. We don't do any of that half the time. Instead, Eve took a bite. And even if Eve acted like she didn't have good sense and ate it anyway and said, oh, Adam, oh, Adam, look, this is good. You want to, oh, God, Adam, step right on. Oh, God, this woman whom you have given me is offering me some fruit from this tree. And I'm not sure what to do. Don't eat it. That's it. Don't eat it. Instead, he waited until they got caught or in trouble to point the finger. Oh, this woman you gave me. You should have done that five minutes ago, sir. It's too late. Mm -mm. It's too late. Isn't it? <laughs> and now the devil done tricked them using their ignorance while tempting them with knowledge. Ain't that something? He was tempting them with knowledge. She bit it thinking that she would be knowledgeable. Like God. Hi, that don't even make no daggone sense. <laughs> he used their ignorance by tempting them with knowledge. Ain't that something? And he tricked them in ignorance by convincing Eve that they would know more by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so you see, not seeking God and reading the word for wisdom in decision making, knowledge of your assignment or understanding is, in fact, choosing ignorance. You're choosing to not know anything if you're mm -hmm. not seeking God for this information. You have opened the door for lies to seep in and tell you what you can't do because you don't have the facts to contest them with. See, Jesus, he understood the assignment. See, they, they say that today, understood. Jesus understood the assignment. He knew what he was placed on earth to do. Nothing was going to get in the way of him fulfilling what God had predestined predestined nothing was going to get in the way and we're going to read matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11 this is where the devil tempted jesus guys verse 1 it says then the spirit led jesus into the desert he was taken there to be tempted by the devil jesus ate nothing for 40 days and nights that's hungry after this he was very hungry mm -hmm. the devil came to tempt him and said if you are the son of god Tell these rocks to become bread. Jesus answered him. The scriptures say, it is not just bread that keeps people alive. Their lives depend on what God says. Mm -hmm. Then the devil led Jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem and put him on a high place at the edge of the temple area. He said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, jump off because the scriptures say God will command his angels to help you and their hands will catch you so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. Lord, now, have mercy. Notice, the devil quoting scripture. Satan, Satan, he knows the Bible. He knows the scripture, guys. He, he just don't follow because he a fool. 
2. Jesus answered, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Then the devil led Jesus to the top of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the wonderful things in them. The devil said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all these things. First of all, I'm Jesus. Jesus said to him, get away from me, Satan. Uh -huh. The scriptures say, uh -huh. you must worship the Lord your God, serve only him. Uh -huh. Get on. So the devil left him. Then some angels came to Jesus and helped him. Resist the devil and what? He will flee. And that's exactly what he did. But I got, guys, I want you to look at what it looks like when the devil tempts you in ignorance. Eve chose ignorance by leaning on her own understanding. Versus when the devil tempted Jesus, the son of God, who is the word. Therefore, he knew the word. The Bible says in John 1, 1, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God is the word. The Bible also says that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. What is the truth? John 17, 17 says the word of God, God's teaching is truth. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is the word. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus knew the truth because he was the truth. Mm -hmm. He was equipped with incontestable knowledge. The Bible is incontestable knowledge that he understood and had the wisdom to apply. Ergo use. Had to. The wisdom to apply. You see the difference. The difference. How Jesus responded versus how Eve responded. Therefore the devil, he could not penetrate his walls of knowledge. He could not penetrate that incontestable knowledge that Jesus had. There was no door. There was no avenue of ignorance for the devil to get in. Jesus knew the truth. He was the truth. So when you know the truth, when the truth is in you, there is an incontestable wall of knowledge that is there. That's that helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. It cannot be tr penetrated mm -hmm. because the truth is in here. The truth shall set you free. Yep, yep. And so the devil cannot get in here. He can't fill it with lies because it is that impenetrable wall that he cannot get through with his lies. And so like I was saying with Jesus, there was no door or avenue of ignorance for the devil to get in. The devil was not welcome. And so I'm going to hand the baton to my loving husband. But first, I'm going to close with this. Do not just listen to this message and stay the same, guys. Or stay in your ignorance. Ignorant. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 24. It says, do what God's teaching says. Yep, yep. Don't just listen and do nothing. When you only sit and listen, you are fooling yourselves. Mm -hmm. Notice it didn't say that the devil was fooling you here. It says you are fooling yourself. You. Hearing God's teaching and doing nothing is like looking at your face in the mirror and doing nothing about what you saw. You go away and immediately tell somebody you need to do something with what you heard. You look foolish. You look, you're looking foolish out you here, son. foolish. <laughs> Guys, the word of God tells you the truth. The truth about the enemy's tactics and how to remain armed against them. The belt of truth, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. It tells you to seek God and to pray without ceasing. Don't stop. It tells you the truth about who you are. The righteousness of God, fearfully and wonderfully made. The head and not the tail. More than a conqueror and heir of the most high God. Uh, and uh. it tells you the truth about your capabilities. Ergo, what you can do. All things through Christ who strengthens you. Jesus said you will do works that he did and far greater works than he far did. Far greater. Far greater. You can tell mountains to move in Jesus' name. You have dominion, power over demons. You can do all things. What? Oh. All things. Through Christ oh. who strengthens you. You just didn't know it yet. But now you do. So you can't do what? Mm -hmm. You can't do what? You can't be ignorant. You can't do what? Well. Yeah. That was, that was good. That was good. That was good. You know. A lot of times as humans. We often go through times that are difficult. Mm -hmm. Times where things aren't as certain as we'd like them to be. Yep. 
And as believers, we know what we should do. But as humans, but as humans, ignorant humans, what do we actually do? Yeah, we panic. Mm -mm. We get scared. Mm -mm. We let fear creep in, and then from there, it just goes all over the place. Mm -mm. You know, we live in a world where the majority of the people in it, they won't only give you bad advice, you know, especially regarding fear, but they'll even encourage you to feed into the fear. So today I am going to speak towards some of that horrible advice that the world gives. You know, and this would be why, by way of phrases or slogans or, or and you know, I'm going to include some actual advice that I've received from people. And what I'm telling you, yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, I, I, I assure you that any bad advice that, that you've been given that's of the world, it can be disputed with scripture. Yeah, like Jesus did. So that's what we're gonna do today. You know, because first let me let me let me start with this scripture. Let me lead in. Let me walk you slow so that I can bring it to you fast. You know, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is Isaiah 41 10. You know, and I say that. Scripture to let you know that obviously you're not doing this alone. Obviously, this is God. And obviously, with God, anything. Obviously, if you can move a mountain, with, if you can move a mountain by way of God's power, dealing with a person's bad advice, that's a, cake, a, a cakewalk. Yeah. That's a cakewalk. And Eve couldn't have known what she was capable of if she, she just took an apple. It was just an apple. I'm trying to tell you. You like apples. Like I mean, it was that. about a fruit, but. But, <laughs> well, you know, that's the that's the that, I guess the apple is what they depict, but the fruit. You said it was beautiful. I guess apples ain't that pretty. But anyway, I don't care what type of fruit it was. She had access to all the other fruits yeah. and veggies in the garden. Yeah. She didn't have to touch that one. I'm pretty sure it was it was eaten. I'm pretty sure all of them were beautiful. Beautiful. Now. Sick. My, let me let me let me get to the first piece of advice. First and foremost, you know y'all know folks. I was, I was a happily I'm happily married. I was happily married. Mm -hmm. Love you, girl. Love you. <laughs> so uh, one thing about the world, they they don't get down with marriage like that. You know, and, and how do I know? Because in media, almost everything out there paints a a perverse picture of marriage. Uh -huh. I mean everything. You know, even the even the most. Uh, the, the greatest shows that had the greatest husband, even even with that, they just eventually just take him into a cheetah or take her into a cheetah or somebody's having an affair or somebody got a baby on the outside. Somebody. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Hey, we, they shouldn't have did that to Frank on Moesha, man. They ain't have to do Frank like that. They, Frank was a good dude, man. Frank was a good dude, man. They ain't have to do that. Ain't nobody know who Doran was. Anyway... <laughs> But let me share a piece of advice. This is advice that I actually received from someone around the time when I was about to get married to my lovely wife. And this is verbatim. You shouldn't get married because all women cheat. They're all conniving. Mm -mm. You know, first and foremost, I guess he's been with every woman in the world in order to tell me that. I, guess. I don't know. You know, mm -mm. but isn't that crazy? Isn't that wild? But I bet y'all know what scripture I'm going to use, right? Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a true faithful wife, true and faithful wife, finds a good thing and obtains, obtain, obtains favor and approval from the Lord. Yeah. Well, would you look at him? Look at him, look at him. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we can agree that if it's in the word that uh, we can believe it, that it is so, that it is indeed true. Right? Can I get an amen? Yeah. It wouldn't have said it if you couldn't find a good, faithful wife. And the, st uh -huh. and the scripture states that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Not only that, it states that if you get a good wife, good thing, you, you get favor. With you Lord. get approval from the Lord. Now, look, look, look at what fear got you thinking. That you can't find a good woman. You can't do what? You can't do what? That you, you can't find a good wife. Now, you got to ask yourself. Are you searching with the spirit of God or are you wearing those fear goggles? Mm -hmm. 
Wish I had some shades to put on so I could see how, show y'all what some fear goggles look like. Mm -hmm. but, but, but anyway, how insecure do you have to be for you to hear someone say that they're getting married and your first thought is, well, what if they cheat on you? She gonna cheat. Yeah, man. This is real advice I received, y'all. This oh, is real yeah. advice I received. Now, let's let's look at... Look, picture if I would have listened to that advice. That nonsense. He would have missed out. She and she would too. And we wouldn't be here giving you this word. Let's look at what fear really will cause you to lose. For one, you will have the opportunity to feel God's love. Mm -hmm. Now, if you haven't felt God's love, you have, but you might not know it yet. If you uh, haven't, if you haven't come to the realization of God's love, and you haven't, you know, consciously felt it, it's a different type of feeling. You know, right. expect just think of think of the perfect partner for you, the perfect person. Whatever that looks like in your mind, in your mind is probably wrong, but I'm going to humor you for a second. Um, just, just being perfect for you. Imagine that and how it would feel to wake up to someone each and every morning that loves you through all of your flaws. And their forgiveness is real forgiveness. Real forgiveness. The same way I believe this exists, I also believe that the large majority of the world does not marry that person. Why do you think they don't marry that person? They ain't listening to God. Mm hmm Yeah. They yeah. didn't get, they, they didn't yeah. get what God yeah. mm -hmm. Fear. That decision wasn't God mm -hmm. Fear. Fear of getting cheated on. Fear of themselves cheating. Fear of having to answer to someone. First of all, like, listen. Let me, let me, let me say this now. Because this narrative that I feel is being spread across the world that a husband is a slave. <laughs> you know... Now, the phrase, happy wife, happy life, partially true, but you see, the thing is, when you implement that phrase, now, that's another, that's another piece of advice from the world. But anyway, when you implement that phrase, happy wife, happy life, what happens to the husband? So please, guys, stop thinking that if you're married to someone, you have to just relinquish yourself and just uh, 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 yes, 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 I do it. Mm -hmm, yeah, I show sure, I love my wife. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, stop. Stop that. Stop that. But, but for the fellas that fear sex, sex, mm -hmm. maybe it's women out there that I think this applies to. But let's just be real. Mm -hmm. Let's just be real. Fellas, I'm talking to y'all right now. Mm hmm. The fear of having sex with the same person for the rest of your life. <laughs> for one, one, you shouldn't be having sex before marriage anyway. <laughs> that's one. That's one. But that's not the lesson for today, so I'm not even going to dive into that. Because if I dived into that, I would, I would take away from my, I would go away from my lesson because, uh -huh. but y'all, y'all ignorant out here. Anyway, mm -hmm. two, fellas. Not that many women, women want to have sex with you anyway. Mm. <laughs> mm -mm, don't don't some, hurt them. Don't hurt them. I bet if somebody watches saying, shoo, yeah. Okay, so let's say, mm. let's say, let's let's compare the amount of sex, air quotations, that you've had to the amount of women in the world. Mm -mm. Now, some guy, I don't heard guys say, no, listen. Get into somebody business. I ain't, I don't heard guys tell me that. I'm doing a hundred girls, two hundred girls. You know what I'm saying? And you proud? <laughs> okay. Well, how many women in the world? And let's compare that to that two hundred. Like I said, not that many women want to have sex with you anyway. Anyway, move forward. Being scared of being cheated on, and not being able to have sex with this imaginary group of women. You trying to tell me who miraculously want to have sex with you now that didn't have want to have sex with you before? The lies. All of a sudden enemy. now you got married though you know, all of a sudden they just want to have sex with you now. So you trying to tell me those reasons are solid enough to miss out on the person that God made for you? That's those are solid enough to miss out on the perfect person. Those are solid enough reasons to to lose out on a person made specifically for you. Yeah. But on another note. Those things are solid enough to get approval and favor from the Lord. I wait. It's 
Slap yourself. Ignorant. Slap yourself. I mentioned premarital sex a little earlier. Let's stay right there for a second. Now, I know this one is going to drive y'all crazy. Mm -hmm. You know how people use the phrase, they say? I always talk about this. That they say, you know, they say this, they say that, without fully knowing who they are. That they, that people always mention is the world. So now let's address what they say about premarital sex. Another mm. one of those phrases that the world created. Mm. Why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free? Mm, mm. Heard that phrase before? Heard it. Heard it. Now, clearly the milk is referring to sex. Clearly. And the cow is referring to marriage. So let's translate this into, you know, in, into world speak. Why get married when you can get sex without the commitment? Well, let's see what the good book has to say about this. Let's see. Hebrews 13.4 says... Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Mm -hmm. mm, Sorry, I got to chill right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what the scripture means, right? Let's break it down for you. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break, break, break it on down. Mm -hmm. Okay, marriage should be honored by all. That means including all of y'all and married folks. They like to give us married folk advice about things that you've never experienced yourself. Okay. Um, and the marriage bed kept pure meaning sex should be specifically left to married people. The peop the bed is being made impure because sex, something that's made only for married people, is happening amongst ma ma unmarried people. You follow me? You feel me now? You feel me knocking? Well, let me in. Okay. Let me in. Well, let me in. Now, let's talk about this piece of advice. Fair mm -hmm. commitment. It's really making people think that sex is the best part of, man, of of human connection. People think sex is the best part of human connection. Now listen, I'm married and I love having sex with my wife. I'm sorry. But um <laughs> but that isn't not that is not the greatest part of our connection. Not someone potentially helping you be a better person. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's not the best part. Not someone helping to pull you out of a dark place when you reach it. Mm. That's not that's that's, that's, that's better than like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on who you are. Uh, that's, that's not better than that. Oh, oh not someone putting themselves on the line to stand up for you. No. Ain't y'all the same people out here that saying, yeah, ain't these, these girls ain't loyal? So you trying to tell me you're complaining about someone not being loyal, but sex is better than finding that loyal that you're talking about? Please make yourself make sense. Make it make sense. You can't. You know why? Because you're ignorant. Ignorant. Even in the idea to just to have as much sex as you possibly can without being married, it seems to be common knowledge that sex with someone you have a true connection with outweighs sex with a random. See, because when we're talking about your wife, when we're talking about the person God made for you, now we can include there is a spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. There's a spiritual connection. You think sex with a bunch of strangers is better than that? Do you? The lies yeah. of the enemy. Now put this in perspective, guys, because this is going to blow your mind. Now I want you really to, I know it's going to be hard for you to picture. I know it's going to be hard for you to think of. But I really want you to put this in perspective. Now, think of the person God made just for you. That They made them for you in every way. Po he made them for you in every way possible. I want you to put that in mind. Every way possible. Just for you. God made them just for you. In every way possible. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that Because if you didn't get it You ain't going to get it Damn. Pray about it um, Now this last piece of advice Is probably one of the more popular ones And you hear it all the time You hear it all the time You hear it in songs You, know, you might be in movies or, or whatever type You know just worldly media YOLO You only live once You only live once <laughs> Well Lies and deception if I'm a man of God and if I'm uh, in belief of the spiritual realm, then um, I, I, I live here. I experience death here once. 
And then I live. That sound like. Oh, okay. I can count, right? I'm counting, right? Right? Okay. Now, by definition, YOLO, you only live once, if you don't know what the acronym means. By definition, this phrase is a modern version of a Latin phrase, carpe diem. Mm -hmm. Meaning, seize the day. Since you only live once, you need to live life to the fullest. Even when that means embracing adverse behavioral choices that carry an inherent risk. That's the YOLO y'all rapping. See, YOLO, you only live once. First of all, that in itself is just wrong. But I get the gist behind it when you live this life. So you want to make sure that you live the most righteous one you can live. At least that's the one I'm standing by. Right. But that's not what y'all talking about. That's not what y'all talking about. I can tell you that's not what Lil Wayne talking about. I know that ain't what Drake talking about. It's talking about embracing adverse behavioral choices that carry an inherent risk. Just for context, let me give you an example. Let's say you're in a relationship, right? Or you're married, whatever the case may be, and you run into an old flame. You know, an old flame. Your girl you used to be into, and you know, now she's showing you the interest. She's showing you the interest. She letting you know, hey, you're looking good, and I'm noticing. My eyes are on you. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, for whatever reason, because, you know, the enemy likes to step in in these moments where you have struggles, you battling yourself about this. You're feeling the struggle. It's feeling real to you. Yeah. And you go to one of your friends. Hey, man. So, it's getting kind of getting kind of thick out here, man. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what should I do about it? Mm -hmm. and, and one of your friends says, YOLO, what you think they mean? When they, when they give you that advice, when they speak it to you, what do you think they mean? You think they mean... You only live once, so make sure you be righteous right now. You think is that you think? Do you think that's what they mean? That is not what they mean. <laughs> they pretty much saying, "Well, Don't you get it." They pretty much saying, "Look, this opportunity will come off this, so you better Smash jump on that." Smash like a hot hole potato. <laughs> jump on that. That's you better jump on that because <laughs> she looking right, she looking tight, and it's about to be a good night. No, <laughs> no. But, but let's check the scripture. Let's check the scripture. Scripture. Let's check the scripture. Y'all thought I was going to leave it out? No. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 13, 15 says, good judgment wins favor. Mm -hmm. Same favor that uh, marriage does. Mm -hmm. But the way of the unfaithful, unfaithful leads to their destruction. Yeah. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't even brag about their foolishness. Fools don't, and even brag about their foolishness. Look, they brag about their foolishness. Cause what's the what? Cause, cause, cause after you knock it down, <laughs> what, what your what your homeboy gonna do? What you see? Huh? You handle business, bruh. You knock it down, bruh. So you trying to tell me you want the type of friends that encourage you to uh, be inf uh, uh, be an infidel <laughs> in your marriage? Okay. Those same friends that gave you that dumb advice. Bragging about you breaking the commitment that you gave to the partner that God made for you. You know, it's just... It's, it's, it's not just horrible in general to do to someone. It also states in scripture that it leads to destruction. It's a moment of possible pleasure. Possible because you don't even know if you're going to enjoy it. Is that worth destruction? So we're out here being unwise on purpose. Mm -hmm. You gotta be an ignorant on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> on purpose. Ignorant. The crazy part is that this is a popular phrase. <laughs> oh, well, ignorance is popularity. <laughs> We're making bad decisions just to have fun. <laughs> Come on, seriously. We're just having fun. Seriously? No, no, we not about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not about to do that. Nonsense. Now, now I want all of y'all, all of y'all, to think about this and. Everyone who who has friends on earth has experienced bad advice. I'm pretty sure of it. Listen, I could go on for like 24 hours about the bad advice that I've received. Oof. Shoot, I can go, go even, longer. I can go even longer about the bad advice I gave. But <laughs> I'm, I'm transformed now, though. But but think about these these uh, moments of uh, bad advice that you received from friends. Most of the time, when you received it, you knew it was bad. 
You knew it was bad, but you couldn't fathom the idea of leaving whatever opportunity you found in doing that stupidity. Yeah. You know, and and even if there is even people who felt like they didn't deserve to take the the right route. But because you're in Christ, see, because you got the idea of saying you, you can't, you can't do what? You can't do what? You can't do what? You can't do what? You can't be righteous. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You can't be spiky. Mm -hmm. You can't do the right thing. You can't stand up for. You can't stand up for the commitment that you made to your wife on the altar in front of God and her family and friends and your family and friends and. Cause listen, mm -mm. listen, I'm gonna go there. Mm -mm. I'm gonna you, go there. You talking to somebody today? I'm gonna go there. Listen, huh, fellas, fellas, I want y'all to know this: the way that guys in this world carry themselves with their friends, their homeboys, their a one day ones, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Mm -mm. It's a little weird. Mm -mm. Um, a little homoerotic. <laughs> Yeah, I said it. Because you guys, this whole bros before hoes. But let's look at the basis of that saying even. So what what if we talking about your wife? <laughs> your bros have come before your wife? Mm -hmm. Your bros can just call your wife a hoe and just be cool? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand why guys, fellas, why do we have this wall up yep. that we are only inclusive with our without with us, the guys, and then we leave our, our, our lady out, the lady that we we wake up every day with, the lady who cooks us meals, the lady who makes sure that we feel good every day, the the lady who who holds her breath sometimes when she's annoyed. Just to keep your mouth, your mental intact. Um. Yeah. I mean. Hey, hey, hey! hey. I don't need you to agree so much. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, if you're, if you're, if you're claiming, claiming to be a straight man, <laughs> and yet you have these ideologies and these mentalities. What are you really feeling? Then it's real questionable what are you really saying? choosing your bros before your wife or your woman or your lady because, uh, yeah, it's looking like you know, it's a, I mean, it's something that she can do that they can't, right? Mm -mm. I think, right? I thought, is it? Mm -hmm. Do we need to? We don't need to. Nah, we ain't diving deeper because <laughs> they are. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, 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 but I say this to say all of these instances of bad advice just. <laughs> further push you to believe that you can't do what's right mm -mm. because you're only you can only be as righteous as the circle that you're in because if you're right if you're the righteous person in the circle of unrighteous people then eventually to be in that circle is going to be an argument with someone and if i have to continuously argue about my belief in christ then we not we don't have, we can cut this off right now we can yeah, we can nip this in the bud right now mm -hmm. because listen, if you are anybody who I am, who I consider myself, uh, or you consider yourself friends with me, so that you can go on, you know, and so that you can go ahead and uh, you know whatever, you can go ahead and make the decision for yourself. If if you can't respect, see, because I'm not gonna say that you have to believe what I believe. I'm not gonna make that one because. Mm -hmm. You know, no, because, you know, but if you can't respect it and if you have to continuously put yourself in a place where you feel like you have to convince me otherwise or you have to put yourself in a place where you just can't wrap your mind around why the belief happens. So you have to keep wondering and keep stumbling over your words and keep stumbling over your thoughts and wondering why I believe what I believe. Go ahead. Ask yourself out right now. Uh huh. Make it easy for yourself. Make it easy for yourself. See, because I'm not uh, because I'm not the person that's not willing to tell you. You know, I'm not the person that's not willing to say it. So save your feelings right now, because if you it's it's it's, it's no in between. It's no in between. Either you for it or you ain't. Mm -hmm. And it's in love. I'm we gonna speak it in gonna love. Do it in love, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna speak the truth. And we know we know it's a two-edged sword. 
I can't help that it hurt. It's just the truth. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A knife gonna hurt when it cut. But And it be cutting. But if you chose to fall on the knife, I mean what you want me to do? What you want me to do? Because if you walking around with the ideology that you can't live righteously, you can't you can't coincide with me. Because if you can't and I can, what why do we belong in the same circle? See, because you can't. That means you believe that you can't. I can. That's because I believe that I can. See, if you believe that you can't, then you believe that I can't. Right? You think I'm I'm a I'm some supreme being or something? I'm not I'm no I'm no I'm nowhere near I'm nowhere higher than any other person. God loved me just like he loved the bum on the side of the street. God loved me just like he loved the prostitute. God loved me just like he loved the murderer. God loved me just like he loved the pedophile. Mm -hmm. So why? Why do I why should I why do I feel like why why does my idea that I can be righteous why why does it differ from yours? Because that means if I if, if I believe it and you don't, that means we're working with two different people. <laughs> we working with two different people, and I can't get with the person you're working with. Mm -mm. I can't get with the person you're working with. You go work with him alone, or with the rest of the world. I ain't gonna say alone with the rest of the world. You can be in the rest of the world. Y'all gonna be cool. You look cool, my y'all smoke your weed, drink your drink. You know, go to whoever trap singer concert you go to, and then talk about shooting people that you ain't never done. I don't know. But I can't get with it. I can't get with it. That's because I know that I can be righteous. Mm -hmm. I know that I can inherit the Holy Spirit. I know that I can do uh, work miracles and, and perform my gifts in his power. I know that I can. Yep. See, because if my question to you got to be, you can't what? You can't do what? You can't be around me. <laughs> you can't do what? You can't do what? You can't do what? Oh, you know, I do it when the time right now. The time now. The, the time, time now. Is now. The time is now because you don't know that tomorrow going to be here yep. for you. And no one knows when the day is coming. Like we talked about last Wednesday. We, we, you don't know. You don't know when the day. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. Mm -mm. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. And if you got to get ready, that means you ain't ready. <laughs> <laughs> That mean you ain't ready. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, you gonna be scrambling trying to say your to trying to say your prayer, uh, 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 trying to say the sinner's prayer, and you don't even know it. <laughs> you don't even know it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. That was I'm sorry. That I was a word go. for us on this go. morning. <laughs> but long story short, get out of your ignorance. Get out of your ignorance. Get out of your Seek way. knowledge. Seek knowledge, guys. And it's it's really just that simple. To tell you the truth, it is that simple. Stop saying what you can't do. You can do all things through Christ who all. strengthens you. you all, things. Things. all things. All things. How many? All, all things. Of them. All How of much? Them. All. All. Yeah. All. All things. Through Christ, who gives you strength. Yep, yep. And so, you know how people say the sky is the limit? There is no limit. Yeah. Forget, there is no limit. The sky is the sky with the clouds at. That's it. There's no limit. <laughs> no limit. You may do all things through Christ, who strengthens you. Yeah. And that's our message for today. Um, guys, we thank you guys so much for joining us yes, for Sunday yes. service. We hope that you guys enjoy the family movie night that we just had, the Frederick Douglass movie. It was actually really good, really interesting. Last Wednesday, like um, this past week, so this past Wednesday, we had a prophetically speaking um, prayer night, mm -hmm. as we usually do. Yep, yep. And we did not give you guys the prophetic word um, for family. That's what we did. We did the blessing over families. But we did not give you guys the prophetic word. And so it is only right that we go ahead and share it on this um, morning. We were going to do a separate video. But we decided we'll go ahead and share it because we meant to share it but we got caught up into them declarations and you know how it can be with us and so he's going to share the prophetic release 
for families that we should have shared with you guys on this past Wednesday evening during the Prophetically Speaking yes, live stream. Yes, 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 yes. All right. <clears throat> Let me get into mode. <sighs> Simmer myself down. Got a little excited there. All right. The Lord says, I say families be on one accord. The body of Christ is an explanation of how each family should carry out my will. Perform as a body, just as, the man, just as the many families in my word. Build your family in Christ, and each gift, and each gift that is present be used to, be, to spread the good news. Refuse to allow the enemy to come between you. The enemy aims to destroy families. A single vessel is a loss to the body of Christ, but an entire unit will destroy the path of righteousness for many more. For when you all disperse, you will all shine your own individual light, the light that you all built as a unit. Amen. Yeah. And even in that, that's the word of the Lord. Even in that, do not let the enemy come between you. Because if there is something that happens, it will definitely be due to you allowing the enemy to do it. Yeah. So, guys, if you missed the last week's uh, pr mm -hmm. prophetic prayer, mm -hmm. definitely go check that out. Blessing over our families. We prayed over our families. We decreed and declared over our families. And I talked a little bit about the devil's tactics. It's attacks against the family guys and definitely catch all the other prior episodes as well and again like we said in the beginning if you have not been following along with this too much credit series yeah. it's very important that you watch number one you little rebel two i got that feeling three the devil is four and four you can't do what which was you what we just talked what? about today yeah, yeah, yeah. and so definitely go back and catch that let's show little mama Say, I just turned one years old. Year, year. One years old. Eight days ago. Eight days ago. She turned one years old. Mm -hmm. Say, hey. Say, hey. All right, girl, come on. <laughs> All right, and so guys, we thank you guys so much for joining us on this morning and having Sunday service. We really love you guys and appreciate mm -hmm, you guys. Mm -hmm. and we hope that everybody is growing and learning something from it. Definitely reach out to us if you desire prayer, mm -hmm. prophetic <clears throat> cancel, mm -hmm. a, a vial of oil, whatever mm -hmm. you need. We are here Merch. for it. Merch, yes, definitely check out that merch. And so anyway, guys, we love you. Let's pray and send us send you on your way. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you for the allowing the Holy Spirit to move, Father God, in this sermon, Father God, in this lesson, in this teaching, Father God. We thank you for allowing it to flow the words out of our mouths, Father God. We thank you for the ears that are hearing this, Father God, the eyes that are watching this, Father God. We, we thank you for the strengthening that you're about to do in everyone, Father God, in the body of Christ, Father God, in the people, Father God. We, we thank you for allowing the Spirit to move across their homes, Father God. We Pray that that spirit continues to move. We pray that that spirit continues to strengthen and, and enlighten, Father God. We pray for their knowledge, Father God. We pray for their wisdom and understanding, Father God. We pray that they go forward and read your word, Father God, so that they may know who they are, Father God. But even more importantly, they may know who, who they are in you, Father God. Who they are in your kingdom, Father God. Where they belong in your kingdom, Father God. We pray that they take these words, Father God, and allow them, allow them to sing it to their heart, Father God. We pray that they empower themselves, Father God, so that they know that they indeed can defeat the enemy, Father God. The enemy is not strong enough to defeat any person that is a part of the body of Christ, Father God, because we work within your power, Father God, within your spirit, Father God, and we will continue to walk in your will, Father God. We will continue to walk in faith, Father God, and we will continue to grow in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. You guys have a wonderful and happy Sunday. Yes, yes. Enjoy some good Sunday dinner, some football, spending time with your family. And we out. We'll see you guys next week. We out. Bye-bye.